Good morning, good morning, and welcome to Sunday morning service. Give God a hand praise in this place. Yeah, God. Yeah, God. Today is Mother's Day. Today we celebrate all mothers. What an awesome, awesome time. We've gone through different things before. We've talked about different things where mothers, uh, if we had to give you guys a salary, it's some a phenomenal amount that you guys should be compensated for what you do. Um, I honor all mothers today, uh, natural birth mothers, um, surrogate mothers. Uh, I even saw where Minister Keisha put up even dog mothers. So, I mean, it is an awesome thing, yeah, it's because you guys are nurturers. And what better day, what better time to honor you? Uh, I honor my wife today, who is a magnificent mother of some beautiful children, our beautiful children. And just to see the effort and the work and, and just the prayer that goes in uh, behind being a mother. One of our daughters here today literally just showed within a few minutes ago uh, pictures of her son, who is one of our sons, who just went to the prom, who was the prom king. And if you could just see her face today and how it just beams with joy. And, and how many understand that motherhood is not always easy? And it comes with some trials and some tribulations and some testing and some frustration and some points in times when you just don't know what to do, but how many understand that God's word is true? When it says that we are the train of a child in the way that they should go, and when they are older, they won't depart. So the glory is that if you just hang in there, if you just keep interceding, if you just keep praying, you get to see the manifestation of that word. God didn't say it was going to be easy. Can I get a witness? God didn't say it was going to be easy. But we have some magnificent mothers here today, so I just want to Take this time to honor you again. I want to especially honor my wife, Amen. who does just an excellent job as a mother, as a pastor, just as a nurturer to many. Um, so this is your day. So let us pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you that you saw fit for this day, this Sunday, yes. that we would honor mothers. Yes. And what great mother, what example could you give us then? Mother Mary, the Virgin Mother. We thank you, Lord God, because she sacrificed and she believed in you yes. so much that she would say yes to the virgin birth. So we thank you because for if it was not for Mary, yes. we would not be. Yes. So we thank you, God, for allowing your son, Jesus Christ, to come through that vessel, a woman, a nurturer, one who would always see the assignment through. Yes. And even when we think about motherhood and the season has passed, but we just saw in the resurrection season where uh, Jesus was going to the cross, even his mother, she could, she could feel his footsteps. She could feel his heart. She could feel his sense of being. So right now, we ask right now, God, that you would just tap into all mothers. Yes. We pray right now, God, that for every single mother who is going through uh, a tumultuous situation, that child, that wayward child who is not where we think that they should be God. He is in your hands. Yes. Minister Mel says all the time, you never let anybody snatch anything out of your hands. So we ask right now, God, that you would just give these mothers some relief. Yes. That you would just speak to them, Lord God, and just allow them to know that if they would just keep praying, Touch. everything would be all right. Because God, it ain't over. It ain't over. So he said it's over. So we thank you, Lord God, for this day. We thank you for the manifestation of the daughters and the sons and the husbands and the fathers who are here right now because of the strong mothers. For you said in your word, and it is true, he who finds a wife findeth a good thing and obtaineth much favor. So we thank God for these mothers and these wives. So God, as we move forward in our service today, we ask that you would just continue to bless each and every mother. And God, right now, I declare it and I say it right now, mother, if you're here, if you're watching right now, Mother, you, you're feeling disenchanted and you're feeling like nobody said anything to you and none of your kids bought you anything because it's not about the gifts. It's not about the buying. But I'll tell you right now, you are loved. Yes. You are loved. You are loved by each and every one of us here at Perfect World Ministries. But moreover, you are loved by God. And God says you are to live for. How about saying that? I'm not saying, I'm not going to say to die for. You are to live for. 
Pick up your head. Raise up your head, queen. Raise up your head so you can wear the crowns that you so rightly deserve. So each and every mother here, we love you. We appreciate you. We magnify you. And today we are going to give you all your flowers while you're still here. Amen? Amen. Amen. Again, welcome to Perfect Will Ministries. We are glad that you are here. We are celebrating Mother's Day today. Minister Mel has a word from on high. God, I'm praying that you will use her and just use her for your glory and for your purpose. If you are here and you would like to sow into the ministry, there's one of three ways. If you're here, we have envelopes. Make sure you get an envelope. Stick it in the box in the back and uh, you can pay your tithe or give your offering that way. If you're watching online, you can go online to perfectwillministries.org, click the yellow tab, and then after that, you can donate whatever amount you want to your tithe or your offering. Or you can simply mail it to us at Perfect Will Ministries, uh, Bear, Delaware, P.O. Box 823, Bear, Delaware, 19701. All right, we're not going to uh, be labored today. We're going to move right into it. Get ready for praise and worship because we want to make sure that our mothers are honored. We're going to do some stuff with uh, Pastor Tacey, the mother of this church, afterwards. The kids Amen. and I Amen. are going to do something, so we're not going to be long today. Yeah. We're just going to get in and get out and allow God to do his thing. But let me test you. Y'all got to test. Oh, we're ready to do our Perfect Wheels ministry statement. Oh, yeah. and I'm going to be kind of quiet because I want to hear if y'all really know it. Because we said every weekend, listen, this is 20 years, y'all ought to know it by now. Well, 19 years, y'all ought to know it by now. Amen? Amen. All right, you ready? Yes. We are contemporary but not compromised. We envision and experience a diverse, multicultural, worshiping community of spiritually mature believers, leading others into a personal relationship with Jesus Christ, producing healthy families, engaging holistic ministries to develop the community spiritually and economically, and back in the world for the glory of God. And around here, we say, don't give up, don't ever give up. You can win. You can win. We can do all things through Christ who strengthens yes, us. Yes. Let me just say this before we move forward. With each and every church, there should be a vision statement. Yes. Pastor Tacey and I received the name of Perfect World Ministries a year before he even gave us the ministry to have. Amen. So he was preparing us. We didn't even know we were going to be pastors, but he gave that to us a year. And once... We started Perfect Will Ministries. We put some thought into our declarations. What would we declare every single week? Amen. What see? You got to speak a thing if you want a, a diverse and multicultural community. You got to speak it, Amen. right? You got to speak what you have because that's what God said we could do. So we spent some time in doing that. I am so proud of you. You guys nailed it. You guys give yourself a hand. You guys nailed it. So without further ado, we got all the uh, niceties out of the way. Uh, I'm going to ask the uh, praise and worship team to come forward so you can lead us into worship. Amen? Amen. Again, happy Mother's Day. Jesus, take 
direction and insight yes, and understanding and gives us wisdom and it allows us to order and ordain our steps the way God has called us to do so. 
And so we don't want to take the word as something that's so common that we think we know it all. Because the word of God is alive and well, and it speaks. Yes. And if you seek the Lord, you will find him in and through the word. Amen? Yes. Amen. Amen. So we bless God. We thank God for each and every one of you who are here today. We pray that you will lean in and you will hear what thus saith the Lord. Receive your portion. Anytime the word of God goes forth, there is a word in the house yes, for sir. you, for me. From the pulpit to the door, there's a word for each of us. We're Thank not you. exempt because the God, God is so awesome that what he sends for, there's something for you, but you got to lean in and pay attention. Amen? Yeah. Amen. So allow yourself to receive what God has yes. for you today. Yeah. So without further ado, we're going to um, just thank God in advance for the word. Can we thank God in advance? Hallelujah. Yeah. Yeah. The truth of the matter is this. We get excited about things that we desire that we don't even have yet. Yeah. We do countdowns. <laughs> you know, I'm so excited. It's 10 days and 24 seconds and 32 milliseconds before this happens. We get so excited for things that we don't even have yet. But God has given us everything in Christ yeah. so we can trust him enough to thank him in advance. Thank if he's doing it. Yes. If God is in fact the yes. one who is doing it, we yes. can thank him in advance knowing that it'll work out for us in the end. Amen. And I didn't say it was going to be some fairy tale, and I didn't say everything would be easy, but God makes sure that whatever it is we go through, we come out better than we yes. came through. Yes. 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 We can't say that for a lot of things that we experience in life. Right. And so we can thank God in advance for the word, and thank God for Minister Mel as she will come and share the word of life with us. Amen. Amen. Amen.
quick, we got so wrapped up and ready to serve all you mothers today. And we are going to get into the word in just a second right now. What an awesome, motivating song. But we have a birthday in the house today. And we would be remiss if we didn't recognize this one young person who is in the house today. This is a person that we have known, Perfect Will Ministry, since birth. Amen. Since birth. Uh, he, he came in. This person is an absolute worshiper. Yeah. Loves God with all his heart and all his, and all his uh, soul. Yeah. And, you know, time goes by so fast. I don't know. Uh, they say when you get over a certain age, 50 or something, it just go. Because I, I was sitting here talking to the young man this morning. I said, oh, what are you, 9, 10? He said, no, I'm 11, Pastor. <laughs> so I said, okay. So we want to honor this awesome young man, Mr. Cam. Come on up, boy. Worship her. scriptures. I won't be doing like all of the chapters, but just a few scriptures. And in your own time, I would ask and encourage that you would go back and just read Genesis 1, 2, and 3. Ready? Amen. So, it says, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. That's Genesis chapter 1, verse 1. The next verse I want to give you is Genesis chapter 1, verses 26. That God said, let us make man in our image, according to our likeness. Let him have dominion over the fish and over the sea, over the birds of the air and over the cattle. So God created man in his own image. In his image, he created him, male and female. He created them. Then God blessed them and God said to them, be fruitful and multiply. Yes. Now chapter 2, Genesis 2. Verse 7. And the Lord formed man out of the dust of the ground, and he breathed into his nostrils the breath of life. And man became a living being. Verse 18. And the Lord said, It is not good that man should be alone. I will make him a helper compatible to him. Adam to see what he will call them, and whatever Adam called the living creature, that was a thing. But for Adam, there was no helper comparable to him. And the Lord God caused a deep sleep to fall on Adam, and he slept. And he took one of his ribs and closed up his flesh in its place. 
Then the rib which the Lord God had taken from the man, he made into a woman. Yes. Yes. A woman. Woman. A woman. Mm -hmm. And he brought her to man. Yes. And Adam said, this is now bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh. She shall be called woman because she was taken out of man. Did you hear that? Yes. One man. Mm, man. So it's interesting because as I was looking at that, I kept saying, well, it's Mother's Day, Lord. Excuse me for a second. I was uh, in my praise and worship and got a little into the praise and worship. And of course, uh, I'm trying to get back on track here. Now, if we go a little further in verse chapter 3, verse 16, he said to the woman, I will greatly multiply your sorrow and your conception. In pain you shall bring forth children. Now if anyone has ever given birth, which we all pretty much have as women, we know that there's some pain involved. A lot. Okay, for some there's a lot. Sometimes the labor is very long. Sometimes the labor is unbearable. But nevertheless, we can all say that we've experienced some type of pain. Yes. Now, the title is In the Beginning, God Created. So I'm going to take a look at that today, and this is for your information. In the beginning, God created, and that means to bring something into existence. It's to cause something to happen as a result of an action or one's action. To produce or bring about by a course of action. So in other words, when God created the earth and he created man and woman, then he had a thought in mind. Because before you can create something, it has to come to a thought, right? Yes, yes. And in order for it to have a thought, there must be a purpose. So when God created women, there must have been a purpose because he had a thought, right? Because he's a God of purpose. Everything that was created was for a particular purpose when God created the earth. Amen. Purpose is defined as the original intent of why a thing is made. So in other words, if you want to know the purpose of a thing, never ask the thing hmm. as the creator. That's it. Right? Come on. A lot of times we say we want to know our purpose and what is my purpose. Well, it has to ask God, what is my purpose? Come on. He created you, so he knows you. He said you're fearfully and wonderfully made. He knows everything about you from your hair to your foot to your toes to everything else and in between. So if you want to know your purpose, ask the creator. Yeah. The Bible says in Genesis 3.20 that Adam named his wife Eve. Now, Eve means the mother of all living things. Yes. So, because he named her, he gave her that name specifically because she was the one to give birth, to give life to all living things. Amen? Amen. So, in other words, my brother, and all the words, my sisters, I want to just let you know that Adam, the man, named Eve. Okay? He gave her her name. Yep. So, in other words, she's not a chicken head. She's not a diva. She's not a barber. Well. She's not a baby mama. She's not a side chick. She's not a... Come on, now, We call women a whole lot of stuff. We call each other a whole lot of stuff, but that's not what God said. That's right. And so, what does He allow you to name the woman? Yes, it. Mm. And you have what you call it. Mm. Well, well, In well. Beginning, God created woman, mother, the legend. Now, why am I so specific about this woman part? It was interesting because actually. Back in March, I came across something, and we all have been watching the media and watching the news, and we all know that uh, there is a woman called Kentanji Brown Jackson who was going up for a position in the Supreme Court. And so a question was asked to her, and which was a, you know, a question, but at the same time, I was like, excuse me, by this woman named Marsha Blackburn, who's mm -hmm. a senator, right? Mm -hmm. So she asked her this question, and when she asked her this question, it was kind of like stunning because it required a, an answer. So she said, she asked her to define woman. <laughs> define woman. And she said, Ms. Brown said, well, I'm not a biologist. So it says Blackburn, she was displeased, but experts say that Jackson's answer was scientifically sound. There's no sufficient way to clearly define what makes someone a woman. Now, I don't know about you, but the last time I checked, everything was in place. When I went to the bathroom this morning, I put the toilet seat down. When I go to the bathroom, it says male and female, man and woman, and I've given birth, so therefore, I would consider that part of just being a woman, right? 
So it goes on to say, can you provide a definition for the word? This is what she asked Miss Jackson. So it says that she was a little bit confused because she said, I'm not a biologist. So this was an uneasy answer for Miss Blackburn because she said that it should have been an easy answer. It shouldn't have been anything hard. So now, because she couldn't answer it the way that I guess she thought it should have been answered, now she's called into question this woman. So it says, scientists agree that there's no sufficient way to clearly define what makes someone a woman. And billions of women on the planet, there is so many variations, because so how can you determine who or what's a woman? If there's a dispute a lot of times, people make arguments so they can justify the law. So this is a worldly, politic, political agenda. So I said, so you're trying to put it in the world to make it something that is really not. Mm. So I said, well, let's go back to the beginning. In the beginning, God created. Mm -hmm. So the world will go to the law, but I'm going to go to the word. Come on. I'm going to go to the hand. I'm going to go to the Bible. Check the record. Check I'm the record. Check the record. So as I checked the record, it said that God did this. So basically, it's a simple question, but we're going to give the answer to it. So in other words, when he went in to Adam and opened up his side, he said he took out a rib, right? But the Bible says that in Hebrew, that it wasn't just a rib, but he opened up his side. So in other words, God surgically went in, he opened up his side, and he pulled out his rib. So he was specific in what he was doing. He had, had a purpose in mind to do it, right? So there's no discrepancies there. God wasn't confused about what he did. He didn't have to go back and rewrite the memo. He did what he did. He said what he said. He said, one minute. Yes. That is what he called her. Yes, amen. He gave her her identity. Mm -hmm. Now, the Bible goes on and says that when he did all of this, as he created man, that he pulled him out of the dust of the ground. So in other words, he formed man. Mm -hmm. So there's a form. So when you see a man, he's formed. Mm -hmm. He has specific, it says in Hebrew that he was squeezed together, that Hebrew word, right? So that's why they're so built and they're so rugged and that's why the way that they are, because they've been tightly squeezed together. They've been formed. So when he did that, he had a purpose in mind for the man. But at the same time, he had a purpose in mind for the woman. But when he did her, right, it says he formed men, but he built women. Mm. Ah! Well, come on, break, break it down. So when he built women, he, the Bible says that he built her in such a way and fashioned her in such a way that he was skillful in how he did it. He took his time in the way he did it. He made sure that he put specific designs on the way that she was created to be able to be producing and to be able to be created in the way that he intended her to be because he was specific. Amen. He created her. It's a process. When you're thinking about that word building, and I looked it up, it says it's a process by putting all the parts together. It's to assemble and it's to contour. Mm -hmm. The Bible says in Psalms 139, we are fearfully yes. and wonderfully made. Yes. Marvelous is his works. So in other words, he didn't make a mistake. No. He wasn't confused about how he created us. No. He knew exactly how he intended us to be as women. Amen. When we put this together, we find out that there is an internal purpose. For God's creation. Mm -hmm. If we know nothing else, we know that God is with us, no matter what the world tries to say, or how he tries to define us, the devil is still alive. Always. He's with us in our good times, he's with us in our bad times, he's with us in our ups and our downs and our highs and our lows. Yes. I believe that he was with Kintaji the day that they questioned this woman. Yes. And they questioned her and they asked her every type of question, but she was a woman under complete and total control of knowing that who her God was and how she was created. But she answered each and every one of her questions. She answered them well, and even when she was under pressure, you never saw her sweat. That's right. Amen. I believe God was strengthening her yeah. because there was a new day coming, and she had to be the one to be the trailblazer to, well, to say well. the presence that, yes, I am a woman, and yes, I am a mother, but yes, I also deserve to be here because... God created it. He had a purpose in mind. Amen. Psalms 46 5 says, God is in the midst of her. She shall not be moved, women. Glory God God. will help her when the morning comes. Yes. So God is within us. Yes. He's in the midst of us. He's in the midst of our homes. He's in the midst of our job. He's in the midst of our family. He's in the midst of our going to the store. He's in the midst of us when we are talking to our children. He's in the midst of us. We have a power and strength that only can come from a God that says that where there's grace, that when we are weak, that his strength is strengthening us and we have sufficient grace. Amen. Mm -hmm. Praise God. The world is talking about, just for FYI, about this gender-inclusive language. 
Have y'all heard that? I know we all have. Mm -hmm. yes. Mm -hmm. yes. The world was trying to take and banish the word mother and the word woman. Mm -hmm. It's trying to replace the word mother with a more gender neutral language like birth giver, mm. birthing people, mm. pregnant people. Instead of breastfeeding, they want to use the word lactating parents. Mm. Motherhood would be diminished and you would become a birthing person. The devil is a liar. Yeah. There's no truth in him. None. God created man and he created woman. He's a creator. Amen. So, I want you to look at your neighbor and say identity. Identity. The enemy wants to steal your identity, women. Yeah, yes. They yes. want to steal your identity, mothers. Yes, yes. He's been trying to do this from the beginning of time. Yes. From the beginning. There is nothing new under the sun. Yes. So he's looking in his way for his own agenda to climb up the ladder so he can come in and do something that God created as purposeful for his own agenda. Yeah. He There's wants to steal your identity. But when you know that your identity is in Christ, Come on, the one that created you, Come on. the one that says, I know you from your growing up and your lying down, the one that knows every hair on your head, the one that tells you that I'm the apple of his eye. Mm -hmm. When he knows you, he knows you. When he created you, he created you. Yes. Amen. The enemy is trying to steal your identity. We must know our identity in Christ and what he says about us. Know it. Amen. There's two words that the Lord was giving me as I was preparing for this. And one of the words was called persistent. Mm -hmm. And what it means is continuing firmly and obstinately in the course of action in spite of the difficulty or opposition. Mm -hmm. The second word was tenacious. Mm -hmm. It means to keep firm, hold on to something, not readily relinquishing a principle, a position, mm -hmm. a course, or an action. Don't move. Did you hear that? Say it again. Tenacious. Yes. It means to keep firm at something. Mm. So whatever it is that God has given you to do in this season, keep firm. Hold on to it. Jesus, thank you. Cleave to it. Mm. Not readily relinquishing a principle, a position, a course, or an action. I'm a woman. Come on. Yes, 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 yes. I was born a woman. Amen. There's no if ands about it. Y'all were born women. There's no questions about that. But nevertheless, there's an agenda. And that agenda has to be God's agenda. Mm -hmm. Not man's agenda, not the Lord's agenda, or not anything that's coming up at us agenda. So when we are to teach our children and to preach the word of God, because it says train up the child the way that they should go, that when they're old, that they should not depart. God took that very seriously. He gave us the manual. All we have to do is go back in there and look and see what it says. And at some point, there's signs where we have to do it on our jobs, where we have to go in and God says, do thus say the Lord. We have to be confident in knowing that God is with us, yes. that God is for us. Yes. And if he be for us, then who or what can be against us? That's right. We do it under the Holy Spirit because if we live in the Spirit, we're also supposed to walk in the Spirit and yes. be led by the Spirit. And some things we have to take a stand and hold fast to. Yes. Yes. Tenacious women are one that does not hold in something or give up something easily. So in other words, she's a woman that never gives up. Mm. Mm. She don't give up, she don't quit. We may get tired, we may get beat down, but we get back up, don't we? Yes, How many of y'all have been in a place where you've been so tired, you don't know if you were coming and going? You don't know if the upside down is the left side, or if you brush your teeth, you don't know, but you keep getting back up because there's a need. See, the thing about it is when he created, we were created as a help meet, a help meet. But it says also in a different translation, help meet. Help, M-E-E-T. So in other words, we meet the need. Mm. We meet the needs for our husbands. We meet the needs for our children. We need to meet the needs for our job. We meet the need. He put that in us because that was our creation and that was what we were designed to do, to help meet the needs of our families. Mm -hmm. And sometimes we do it so much that we don't know what are we supposed to do next because we get tired and we get weary. Is that not real? Is that not honest? That's right. That's right. We yes. still find the strength that God gives yes. us on the inside to do everything that we have been called yes. to do. Sometimes we wear so many hats, we don't know which hat to put on or take off. <laughs> and, and sometimes, guess what? We pick up somebody else's hat. You ever pick up somebody else's hat? You have all these hats that you're doing, and then somebody else will come there with a problem or even some answer, and then we pick up their hat, and then they tell you their whole 
life story, and then we picking up their issues, and before we know it, we wonder how we get all these hacks on. Why well, I'm so tired? Why I can't move or get up out of the bed? Because we got on too many hacks. We were not created to carry all of those hacks. You better say it. But as women, when we are in dire need of something, come on. the blessing of assurance is knowing that when we're on a mission to get something done, we get focused real quick, don't we? Yeah. Amen. Get it done. We don't care what we have to do or where we have to go. You let something happen to your child that's in another state or another country. You let something, somebody could you a phone call in the middle of the night and say your child is in trouble or your child is sick or they holding your child hostage. Women, will we not get up and do what we gotta do? We might be in the middle of work. Oh, I got to go. I'll be right back. I don't know when I'm coming back. My child is in trouble. You done got home. You done did everything that you needed to do with the other kids and your husband. You done made sure the food was done, everything was done. All while you done made an airplane, a ticket to go into wherever you need to go get that child. Come on. You got to sell the furniture. You got to sell the clothes. You got to go to the car shop. Yes, Lord. Amen. This persistent woman, this grandmother, this widow, this daughter was able to be tenacious because of her faith. She had a believing faith that if she kept showing up, pressing in, leaning in, and pushing, something was going to happen. It takes faith to be persistent, Pastor. This woman lets us know, yes, keep on praying. Pray without ceasing. And Galatians 6 9 says, When the time comes, if we faint not, we will mm. reap the harvest. Mm. Be not weary. Be not weary. Be not weary about doing good. Mm. If we faint not, you're not going to get your reward. Yeah, you're, you're not going to get your prize. Yeah. The word mother, a mother who gives birth, one who has the responsibility of physical and emotional care for children, a woman whose egg unites with a sperm producing an embryo, a female parent, a woman. Having the authority and responsibility of a woman. The word mother is a verb. It's something that you do, not just who you are. Amen. The Hebrew word means point of departure, division. The Greek word means source of something. Verb is a point of departure. It's when a baby is born and a mother, and the, she's the source, and there's a parting, there's a dividing. That's why it's called an afterbirth. If a mother is a one who gives life, a mother is a reflection of a comforter, a nurturer, a gatherer, and a guide. So she reflects God. Yes, she does. Because he does all of that. In his image. When I looked up the word um, mother afterwards, I felt led to do a survey. So I was going around asking women of all different nationalities, all different backgrounds, young, old, black, white, every, just everyone. And I asked them to give me a definition of what they thought, or just when I said the word woman, 
and mother what came to mind. So I actually got to survey, I was trying for 100, I actually got there on 47. And so um, for the woman, the most popular one was strong. So they looked at a woman as being strong. When I looked at mother, the most popular one was nurturer. Isn't that God? Isn't that God in your life when he's been a nurturer? He's been strong, as I said, when we need to be strong. I had the opportunity to be at work, and part of my job is being with different moms, and they come in to get examined. It's OB triage, so I see mothers from all over. And it's nothing like hearing, you know, they're going to go upstairs and they're going to take them up to um, labor delivery to give birth. But I've also had the opportunity to come and walk alongside a few mothers. And I want to just give you a couple of stories because sometimes we're so thinking about Mother's Day, we don't always think about the mothers that have suffered loss yeah. or the mothers that are suffering and going through infertility. And so you don't quite know what to say and you want to be compassionate and you want to be gracious and you want to be there, but sometimes it's just a matter of just wiping the tears. Yes. Sometimes it's just a matter of just holding them and letting them breathe. And I had the opportunity actually in the last two weeks, because a lot of times when I'm preparing for the Word, the Lord allows me to experience these different things that I need to talk about. And so one of the days, uh, I believe it was, um, it was actually May 2nd. Um, I went into work and not long after I got there, there was this scream. And we've all heard screams when you're in full labor. It's painful because something was coming out that you're trying to, you know, just maintain. But these screams were a little bit different. And as I was going into the room, what I realized there was a mother, there was a brother-in-law, and there was her mother. And I realized that um, she had just been told that 38 weeks, two mm. more weeks to go, that she um, had lost the baby. Jesus. There was no heartbeat. And so she was screaming and she was travailing. And these were people of God. They were Christians. They loved God. They knew God. The mother actually went into warring into the spirit. She was calling down fire. She was calling on God. The daughter was screaming. The brother-in-law, I don't know where the husband was, but the brother-in-law was there. And he was, you know, praying. And we were all praying because by this time, the doctors had left out of the room. Sometimes it's a lonely you know, experience when they just tell you that and then they just leave. But she kept saying, and these words kept resonating, was, the Lord, Lord, you are my portion. You are my portion. And she was crying for her baby. And she kept saying, not so. She said, Lord, I reject this. Out of, I reject this out of her grief. And so all we could do and all I could do was just hold her and just minister the word of God. And they got to praying and they got to, to the point where she was crying and, and they didn't know what to do after a while because they were still waiting. And as I'm consoling and I'm wiping this woman's tears, and I couldn't help but think that that the less than two weeks, Mother's Day is coming. Mm. Jeez. Mm. She's 38 weeks. Mm. This is very real and this is very wrong to her. Mm. She prepared the crib. Mm. She set up the room. Mm. She knew the baby's name. She prepared. And as this is happening, now she has to go upstairs because before she goes upstairs, there has to be another doctor to confirm what was already spoken. So as she's waiting and she's crying and she's calling on the Lord, she's calling on God. Lord, turn it around. You are God that can turn this around. And as she's doing this and waiting and, and I'm wiping her tears and I'm cleaning her pads and I'm talking, she said, I still feel my baby move. I still feel contractions. But I have to tell her that, yes, your body's doing what it needs to do because you're still going to give birth. It's just, and this is not just me to tell, but the baby was going to come out alive. And so even though we were still standing in faith, we were still believing for a miracle because he's still a God that's a miracle worker, a God that turns around, and even in the midnight hour and at the last moment. And all of that to say is that even in the midst of her grief and her pain, the brother-in-law put on a song, The Breath of Life. Mm, Jesus. And instead of her screaming and yelling, she turned it over. To God, and she decided to worship. Hallelujah. She Hallelujah. worshiped. I took her upstairs and put her in the room that I needed to, was number one, and she was still worshiping and waiting Hallelujah. for the turn of her. That was day one. Day two, I come into work again after just lit. day one. And as day two, I'm going in, I'm hearing the scream again. Lord, what is going on? What is happening? Here is a mother, a total different 
ethnic background, and they're just telling her that we've got to get you upstairs now because there is a loss of pregnancy at 20 weeks, five months. She didn't even name me yet. Her mother's bawling. Her mother's crying. Her mother's unconsolable at this moment because they were getting ready. She goes upstairs. She gets upstairs. I had to take her to room number two. Mm. Two days. These mothers are grieving. Mother's Day is around the corner. And all of that to say that they both came in full, but now they're going to leave empty. So as I'm looking at this woman, this in number two, and she's about to deliver because the baby's almost out. She said, I don't want to do this. Mm. Why is God treating me like this? What did I do wrong? Same echo words that I heard the day before. Why, God? They all say, well, why, why? And only thing you can say is we don't know why. But we know that he's still God. Mm -hmm. I watched this baby come out. And as this baby's laying with no light, that was a girl this time. Mother's looking, she's still crying. Father's there, grandmother's over there. She knew her daughter couldn't do what she would do and the father couldn't do, so she named the baby, the grandmother did. Sometimes it's just, you gotta pick up. Mm. You have to help the young woman mm. to get through this process, even during her own grief. And as all these women are standing around in this room, now it comes to a point where they don't know what to do, the doctors and the nurses. But the Lord says, you pray. Sometimes God will raise you up and put you in a situation that's so uncomfortable and just so heartbreaking. But he'll tell you, just pray and dedicate the baby. So my responsibility was to dedicate that baby and give him back to the Lord. Amen. But there's a scripture for that and there's a word for that. Because sometimes all you can do is just, as I said, you can comfort them and, and hold them and talk to them and give them tissues and just be with them when there's no words. It says, the child this woman in her home as a happy mother of child and children. Praise the Lord. So, in other words, God will come along, and even though some of them have suffered loss and suffered grief, God will be there. He will be that comforter in the midnight hour. He will be that comforter when the phone stops ringing. He will be that nurturer that will uphold him in the palm of his hands. Even those that are suffering from infertility and wanting children and can't have children, God is still there. He is still with them. He is still on their side. He hasn't forgotten them. Sometimes God, even though sometimes you can't have children and those that have it, they call them barren back in the Old Testament and it's infertility. But when you can't, sometimes you will mother other children. He'll give you other children that to nurture. He'll give you other children to love. He'll say, did you ever think that as you are grieving and wanting your child that there's a child looking for a mother? That's right. There's a child looking that just wants to be loved, that wants to be held, that wants to be held accountable, that wants to be just whole, that wants to say that I'm special, that wants to feel like they've been here for a purpose. Did you ever think that there's a meeting? Did you ever ask? Lamentations 317 for those that have suffered loss and infertility. It says, peace has been stripped away, and I have forgotten what prosperity is. I cry out, my splendor is gone. Everything that I hoped for was lost, was, was from the Lord, is lost. The thought of my sufferings and homelessness is bitter beyond words. I will never forget this awful time as I grieve over my loss. Yet I still dare to hope when I remember this. The faithful love of the Lord never ends. His mercies never ceases. Great is thy faithfulness. His mercy is the day of fresh each morning. I say to myself, the Lord is my inheritance. Therefore, I will hope in him. Though he brings grief, Lamentations 3.32, he shows his compassion. So great is his unfailing love, for he does not willingly bring affliction and grief to anyone. So all I have to say is sometimes it rains on the just and the unjust. Yes, it will. Yes, it will. Yes, it will. That's life. All life. We dare not forget those this morning as we even celebrate Mother's Day. But there's also a mandate that God has given us as women of God. And it's that Titus 2 woman. Listen, I tried to do that Proverbs 31. <laughs> I don't know that's about her character, but at point, at point blank period, I have failed miserably. You know what I can do over that? I can't sew, I can try, but all I can do is some press ons. So, I, so instead of trying to live up to that, even though it's her character and I'm striving towards it, and we must strive towards it, I looked at the Titus 2 woman. I said, oh boy, this seems a little bit more doable because the Bible says that the older women are supposed to teach the younger women. Amen. 
Amen? So as the older women teach the younger women, what is it that we are teaching them? What is it that we are showing them? What is it that we're encouraging them? I believe God has given us the responsibility to teach and mentor to the young women. We can do that by coming alongside them. We can do that by starting off in our homes that when they're babies that we can start teaching them the word of God and teaching them about Jesus. We can come alongside of the ones that are on our job, the ones that are a little rough. And I don't know who God may assign to you, but the ones that may be a little rough, a little rough out there, we can come alongside them and just talk to them. Ask them their story. Yes. How's your day? Yes. Good morning. I, yes. For me, it's high pumpkin. Every last one of them is pumpkin. I may not know your name, and I may not remember. It doesn't mean that you're not in my thoughts and my, and my prayer. But at the same time, when I'm looking at you, I pump it. It makes them feel like they're special, that they're needed, that they're wanted, that they're loved. But sometimes it's just about asking them their story. It's about taking them out to lunch. It's about spending time. Sometimes we're so busy doing everything, we forget to spend time. Yes, that's the truth. Amen. Give me a testimony. Yes. You'd be surprised. Some of the things that you're going through, I've gone through, I've been through, it may be the same thing that they're going through. Mm -hmm. They just need somebody to come around there and say, you know what, yes. Mm -hmm. Mine was as a teenager, as being a teenage mom, I just needed somebody and, and being thrown out of the house and, and out of church and not there. I just needed somebody to tell me I could do it. The world told me I couldn't. They said, you're never going to be able to graduate, you're never going to finish school, yeah. you might as well get rid of that child. I just needed somebody to tell me I can do it. You That's right. You need somebody to tell you, you know what, yeah, mm -hmm, you messed up, you did this, that, ABC. Okay, well, so did I. But guess what? I'm still here. God still loves me. He didn't change my mind. He loves my baby. He still has a plan for my life. He has a plan for my life. He has a plan for your life. You just have to be open enough. Be willing enough. When he leads you to tell him. And sometimes it's the, not so much the older women telling the younger women, but the younger women telling the older women. Yes. I went to the mall, and I didn't tell my sisters this, because I know they're probably like, oh, Lord, did she go again? I went to the mall. I went to Comcast. I was only supposed to go in there, switch out some boxes and leave. But for some reason, I said, oh, well, it's lunchtime. I might as well go eat, get something to eat. So I went to the food court. When I got to the food court, I'm over there, and I got my food. I'm all excited. I'm going to go back home. But all of a sudden, right behind me, I'm hearing this argument going on. And I'm saying, who is that? I turn around, and it's this older woman who has a child, and it's also these three girls. They're arguing, the girls and this mother, and they are going at it, right? So I'm saying, oh Lord, because I'm feeling the Holy Spirit said, mm -hmm, this is yours. I'm saying, I don't want to do it. I'm having this conversation. I don't want to do it, Lord, because they're getting ready to go at it, right? There's a little boy. He looks about hands height, but he's actually about six or seven years old. So he's with the older woman. I'm assuming that's the mother or the grandma. They're going at it, these girls. Next thing you know, there's cussing going all over the place, and they're getting ready to get closer and closer. And as they're stepping closer, I heard the Holy Spirit saying, you go step in. Mm. So now I'm walking in in the middle of these two. I'm on one side, holding this side, and, and they're going in the whole nine. And I mean, older sister, she might have been able to do it and get some licks in, but them three were going to drag this woman. You know, young people, they will drag her. So I'm saying, Lord, please don't let none of them hit me. So in the meantime, I'm saying, don't y'all do this. Please don't do this. You know, you don't want to do this. And for some reason, the Holy Spirit said, tell these girls, I looked at them, I said, go home. Y'all need to leave and y'all need to go home. This will not happen today, right? Mom is still going, but the girls are backing away. The mother's still going. The little boy is shaking. He's trying to make a phone call. He's calling his mom out. He's trying to talk to her. She couldn't hear. All she wants to do is fight. The girls are going back and forth, but they leave. And in that, the Lord says, somebody needs to stand in the gap. Mm. Are you standing in the gap now? Mm. Is God calling you to intercede on behalf? So standing in the gap might not necessarily mean jumping in the middle of, but are you praying? Yes. Are you the, the breach between the younger and the older? Yes. And as a process, this baby is shaking. He says, a wise woman builds up their house, but a foolish one tears it down with their bare hands. This woman on the other side that was older was tearing down her son. She was tearing down these young women. And she may have been almost justified for feeling how she felt. I don't know the whole story. But all I know is that this boy, this young boy, was left in the midst of being terrified. So at some point, these girls were leaving, and she's still going. She sat down and grabbed the baby. He's shaking, right? I said, baby, are you okay? He said, yes. He goes right back to drinking. Mom, are you okay? I says, Mom, hug your baby. He's so scared. He was so scared. She cursed this child out. Oh. This is real. We hear this. We see this. This is real. This is life. But nevertheless, she was still angry. A wise woman builds up. So what did she teach her son? Mm. What did he see? We cannot act 
virtuous and claim to be virtuous and still act like Jezebel. God knows our name. He knows my name. We're not perfect. We're women, we're mothers. We're not perfect. So he asked, Lord, help me with my shortcomings. He'll help you with your shortcomings. We have issues. Yes, we do. But we also have inner strength. We rock through the occasion. I looked at Proverbs 14, 1. It says, every wise woman encourages and builds up her family, but that foolish woman over time will tear it down by her own actions. That's not just for our children, but that's in our homes. That's in our families, that's in our jobs. We have a responsibility. We have a mandate that God has given us. And it doesn't exclude us as we become grandmothers, and that we have gray hair. Amen. It says the gray hair is the mark of distinction, the award of a God loyal life. Mm -hmm. It's a distinction that we get older as we become grandmothers. Yes. So young people and older people and parents, when we send our kids over to our parents' house, what do they come back saying and doing? Grandparents, we must be mindful of the things that we allow them to see, <laughs> the things that we're showing them, the things that we're teaching them. And I and I have to confess, when I when my grandparents come, I fill them up on sugar, I fill them candy, I fill them cooling, I figured it was payback for all the things that they did. And I said, well, I said, well, I said well, the things that we do, I do. And I have to do it because truth be told, I know my mom and dad be mad. I know they be mad, they be upset. That's right. That everything goes well with us, right? But that doesn't take the mandate away from the grandparents as well. So sometimes it has to be trained the child the way that they should know that when they're old, they won't depart. So there's some training going on. But when we get to an age where we become grandmothers and grandparents and grandfathers, there should be some wisdoms. There should be some maturity. There should be some experience. There should definitely be some God. Amen. Amen. Tell the truth. And the legend, the last part. Your legend is your grandparents. That's your legacy. I want to give you one brief one. Because when we think about that, we think about, wow, legend, that's a lot to live up to. Every woman was created to accomplish a specific thing, a specific role that nobody else can accomplish. We were designed and known for something specific and special. We were meant to do something that will make you unforgettable. You were created and born to do something that the world would not be able to ignore. It may be in your family, school, community, or beyond your wildest dreams. Agnes Noxia Boatsu. Anybody ever heard of that? No? I bet you when I say the name you will. Who we all come to know is Mother Teresa. Yes. Everybody heard of Mother Teresa? Yes. She felt the lives and the purpose. Wait, it says, uh, known as Mother Teresa, felt her life purpose was to serve God full time. Mm -hmm. When she was 18 years old, she became a nun. Wow. And she went into India and taught the Catholic high school. For many years, she felt her life's purpose and passion was made clear when she was called by God to help the poorest of the poor. She devoted herself to bring hope, dignity, healing, and education to a needy Calcutta, to those whom other people dismissed as being either beyond help or not worthy of it at all. Mother Teresa started the Missionaries of Charity and became internationally recognized for her selflessness humanitarian work. Her passion to help others led to her identity totally, to identify totally with them. She became a citizen of India, always kept her vow of poverty, even when she became famous. Her works expanded beyond India, other nations of the world, influencing hundreds of thousands of people joined her vision. She believed in the difference that one person could make. And this is what I want to leave you with. She said, if you can't feed a hundred, feed the one. Feed the one. Amen. Amen. 
If you can't feed the hundred, feed the one. Yes. Yes. Who's your one? Yes. Who are you feeding? Yes. Who's starving us? Who's starving God? If you can't reach a hundred, can you reach the one? Yes. Mother Teresa encouraged others not to wait for well-known leaders to do the job, but to follow their vision. By her showing up and her actions was the real need and just doing what she personally could do to help mothers. Mother Teresa became a leader herself. So all we have to do is our part. It don't have to be big. It could be small. It belongs to God honoring and God fearing. Whatever you do, work at it with all your heart. Do work and ask for the Lord, Colossians 3.23. In conclusion, being a mother requires commitment, selflessness, patience, and a whole lot of unconditional love. Yeah. It's a lot of hard work and sometimes thankless and unappreciated work to raise a child, which is why the mothers in your life deserve to be honored this month, this Mother's Day, but not just Mother's Day, every day. Every. A, lot of day a lot of ways we thank you is by giving you cards and giving you gifts. But did you ever think that putting a little icing on top of it would just be just praying for your mother? We can honor her by calling her up and just praying for her. It would be heartfelt, it would be appreciated, and it might be even different. And for some of you, it might be a struggle because of the relationship with your mother. And better yet, it can be flipped. You can flip the script. Daughters, you can call your mothers and wish them a happy Mother's Day. Or mothers, you can call your daughters and wish them a happy Mother's Day. But nevertheless, praying for your mother, praying for that woman could encourage her to the point where she wouldn't even believe that it happened if God hadn't done it. So I want to say to you all today, I know this is a message that had a lot for thought and food for thought. My prayer is that you receive your portion and not forget the mothers that are out there that are still a mother even after loss and infertility, but also to go and celebrate your mother today. Celebrate ourselves as women today because at the beginning and in the beginning, God created women. He created mothers. And he created the legend. Amen? Amen. Amen. Bless God for the word and thank God for um, all that has been shared with us today. We pray that you have indeed received your portion. I want to say happy Mother's Day again to all the mothers. And that does not that always mean that you are a biological mother. You have mothered somebody's child. You have shown them love. You have nurtured them. You have stood in the gap. That's mothering. And so we thank God for each and every one of you who are here today. And so if you would just stand with me, we're going to... Um, have our benediction and we're going to go forth and be